Top 10 Books for Architecture and How to Use Them. What are the top 10 books an architect should read? What is the most important knowledge for an architect to possess? More importantly, how do architects use books in their design process? What do architects think about? Architecture is about praxis or practice. Architects use knowledge to build environments. So all architectural knowledge is practical in that sense. It helps architects make appropriate decisions and to gauge good environments from bad. So before discussing the top 10 books, let's look at what architectural knowledge is. Commodity, firmness, and delight, three forms of knowledge. Ventruvius, the Roman architect in the 10 books on architecture, wrote that architecture is a coming together of three things, commodity, firmness, and delight. The Latin was firmitas, utilitas, and venistas. To use contemporary language, we would say architecture is composed of structure, utility, and art. This comes from the Greek idea of three forms of knowledge, the true, the good, and the beautiful. Later, Kant called this objective knowledge, social knowledge, and subjective knowledge. Ken Wilbur calls this the big three. There are three tests for knowledge. We ask if objective scientific knowledge is true, we ask if social knowledge is good, and we ask if subjective art is beautiful. Architecture is the coming together of these three forms of knowledge to design a project. An architect needs to know structural engineering and building science to make a building stand up and resist forces. This is objective information. An architect also needs to know how to meet clients' needs and the needs of institutions. This is social knowledge. An architect also needs to know how to make a building beautiful. This is subjective knowledge. Always when an architect is designing a project, they are spiraling around commodity, firmness, and delight. Always an architect is comparing one form of knowledge with another. This makes architecture unique and a great form of education. Architecture is one of the few professions that learns how to think holistically. Top 10 books on architecture. Number 10, history. Modern Architecture Since 1900 This is the basic textbook for all architecture schools that teach modernity. To understand modern architecture, you have to read this book. I would argue you can't understand modern architecture without it, and every architect should read it while in school. Honorable Mentions Graphic History of Architecture this is one of my favorite architecture books as it displays the history of architecture graphically. It is a great introduction to the history of architecture while also illustrating key concepts and ideas. Number nine, concepts and principles. Architecture, form, space, and order. I have a love-hate relationship with this book. On the one hand, this book presents many of the concepts and principles of first-year architecture school in one graphic book, which is great. The reason I hate this book is students generally stop here and look no further for architectural concepts or even drawing and graphic technique. Ching's drawing style comes from drawing on tracing paper, which is very basic. Students should learn more advanced drawing techniques and develop their own personal style and not copy Ching. Students shouldn't stop here, as there are far more complex concepts and this book simplifies them down too far. But for the first year architecture students, this is perhaps the best single book. Honorable Mentions Basic Visual Concepts and Principles for Artists, Architects, and Designers This book I had to buy as a first year art student when I went to Massachusetts College of Art. It basically teaches everything architecture, design, and industrial design students learn in the first two years of art school. This is based on the Bauhaus method of teaching that came over to Harvard and MIT after the Second World War. Number eight, theory. The production of space. The production of space is perhaps the most influential 
architectural theory book I've read. In it, Henry Lefavre argues the built environment is created not from architecture, but rather from social forces. Lefavre argues that architecture is a social practice created not by architects, but by society. An architect is the producer of space, but is never the only one. The architect operates within a specific space, the sheet of white paper, but this practice is always defined by other agents, such as developers, bankers, planners, the government, and users. Architecture in this way is inherently political. This is not taught in architecture school. Quite the opposite. It is taught that architects function autonomously, like Howard Rourke in The Fountainhead, who doesn't need clients and can rebel against society. It is taught that architecture is an art or technical technique removed from society. It is a lie that must be unlearned in the practice of architecture. Honorable Mentions Body, Memory, and Architecture This book focuses on the human body as being the main way we understand our environment. Experience of the built environment becomes the main focus of architecture. We experience the world tactily through the body, vision, and hearing. We create mental constructs through memory as we move through space. But don't believe me. I suggest every architect develop their own theories of architecture and don't rely on other people. You create your own practice and profession. Don't let other people dictate to you what to think. The only way to do that is to create your own theory. Number seven, art and artists. Being an architect, one must have something to say and a way of saying it. Many architects have looked to the fine arts as their basis of design. Le Corbusier looked to the Cubists and Picasso as the basis of his design. Mies van der Rohe looked to Malevich and the Constructivists for his early inspiration. Frank Gehry has made a career off of ripping off Frank Stella. Two Worlds of Andrew Wyeth, a conversation with Andrew Wyeth. For me, I looked closely at Andrew Wyeth. He paints realistically, yet at the same time is very abstract. His images seem to tell a story or imply a story, but the viewer has to decipher the story for themselves. There is no literal story to be seen. Objects and things in his paintings represent human qualities, like a cast of characters, yet never overtly give away their secrets. The other thing I learned from him is that watercolors can be very tactile, like touching an object with one's vision or mind. I always want my architecture to have this tactile quality and be real for the body. Honorable Mention The Great Age of British Watercolors, 1750 to 1880 The old way to teach architecture before the Bauhaus was the academy method, which was taught primarily by the Beaux-Arts in France, but also in Britain at the Royal Academy. To learn the older way of working, I studied British watercolors, and my watercolor technique is some variation of what British and French architects did at the Academy. But don't go by my art influences. Have your own. Only you know what you like. Art is purely subjective. Number six, architecture and architects. My favorite architect is Carlo Scarpa, and this is my favorite book about him. I think it was only published in Italian. I couldn't find his book in print, so when I visited Italy, I went to Venice and bought this book. It shows his design process and how his drawings were used to design projects. He would sit down with craftsmen and draw details he wanted them to build, and they just had the skill to just build it from his sketches. I wish things were this easy today. I think it's always important to find an architect who you really love and admire and find as many books on them as you can, not to copy, but just to inspire you. Scarpa isn't for everyone, so I suggest you find your own inspiration. Number five, structure and engineering. Simplified engineering for architects and builders. The first simplified engineering book came out in the 40s and has been rewritten and reprinted continually since then. This is the basis of structural engineering and is a great introduction for architects and builders. Engineering school teaches more higher math than it does actual engineering. 
so the first several years of engineering school is just learning math. This book explains engineering with just basic high school math. Architects never do higher math anyway, so learning these basics without years of math is a great way of learning engineering. These are good books to have for architects doing small projects where you don't have a big enough budget to hire a structural engineer and just want to do all the calculations yourself. Also, if you're studying for the ARE, the Architects Registration Examination, these are good books to study from. Number four, practice. The Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice. The Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice is the definitive guide to architectural practice in the United States. It is so expensive that I only bought the student version, but even this one is enough to understand the profession. If you want to be a professional architect, this book is indispensable. It is most important when you are starting your own practice as an architect and need to learn the whole business and project management side of architecture that they don't teach in school. Honorable Mentions How to Start and Operate Your Own Design Firm A Guide for Interior Designers and Architects This is a simple, concise book on how to start and run an architectural practice. I used this extensively the first year or two I had an architectural practice. Number 3. Graphic Standards Architectural Graphic Standards by Ramsey and Sleeper This book is the standard of architectural practice. It has many versions in print starting in the 1930s. The way architects use this book is to look up architectural details, then use it as a basis of design for their own details. For perhaps the first 10 years as an architect, I would use this book extensively to develop details for architectural documents. At a certain point, I had memorized everything in the book and could just develop my own details without it. As everything has been digitized in architecture, the art of drawing good details has been destroyed. I suggest finding older versions of this book, maybe from the 1960s or 1970s to learn from. Number two, code books. Unfortunately, the most read books by practicing architects are code books. Architects are required by law to know the codes and to meet them for all their projects. I hate spending so much time learning codes, but it is a requirement if you want to be an architect. There are many good books teaching code requirements, and I suggest getting a few. Number 1. Towards a New Architecture by Lee Corbusier This book is the single most influential book on modern architecture ever written, and its concepts and principles have defined the built environment and how we think of it ever since. It lays out the role of modern architecture as the creative destruction of the European feudal city to clear the ground for a fully rationalist, industrial design-built environment. The city has always been thought of as a social place for civilization to flourish. Towards a new architecture makes the argument that cities should not be socially constructed over time, like language. Rather, it should be thought of as a machine for living in, fully rational based only on functional requirements. This completely changed how architects thought of their role in society. Architects change from a culture and art creator to a rationalistic scientific problem solver. This was of course an illusion that Le Corbusier promoted, but one that has stuck with the architectural profession ever since. This book may be the most influential book on architecture, but I would argue it is also the most destructive book as it created industrial buildings and cities that expressed love for the machine. Today we must undo the destructive elements of the post-war industrial city and create a new post-industrial city, more responsive to nature and a person's lived experience. The Big Three in the Design Process From this reading list, we can see there are three forms of knowledge an architect must assemble to create a project. History is social knowledge. Architectural concepts and principles are subjective knowledge. Architectural theory is mostly social knowledge. Art and artists are subjective knowledge. Architecture and architects' books are almost exclusively focused on subjective knowledge. Structural engineering books focus on objective knowledge. Books on architectural practice focus on social knowledge, the architect's ability to navigate social requirements. 
Graphic standards are structural and building science. Codebooks, too, are a synthesis of two forms of knowledge, building requirements and use requirements. What do you think? Do you agree with my list of top 10 books for architects? Do you have other books you think are important? If so, leave your book recommendations in the comments below. I'm Jamie Roberts. If you like this video, please like and subscribe.